Hello students, today in this video we will discuss about the machinery and enzymes or mechanism of DNA replication. Machinery and enzymes for uh, our DNA replication or mechanism of DNA replication. Of course, already we discussed that uh, it has been proved that the type of replication the DNA undergoes is semi-conservative type and that has been proved by Meselson and Stahl by using isotopic nitrogen that is N15 that uh, we have already discussed in the previous video. Now uh, let us talk about uh, some important points. When does this replication occur? So the DNA will undergo replication in prokaryotes at the time of reproduction. In prokaryotes replication occurs at the time of reproduction and don't forget that the common method of reproduction in prokaryotes or in bacteria is binary fission. Binary fission. So, during binary fission, one parent cell or one bacterium cell will divide into two daughter cells. And both of them will contain same amount of DNA. How that is possible? So it is becoming possible as the parent DNA in the parent cell or bacterium is first replicating. That means the DNA amount is doubling. And this doubled amount of DNA is distributed equally among the two daughter cells. In a similar way, even in the eukaryotes, the DNA replication occurs at the time of cell division. Of course, we know that in eukaryotes, the cell divisions are of two types, mitosis and meiosis. Of course, mitosis occurs in somatic cells or body cells or vegetative cells. Whereas, the meiosis occurs in reproductive cells or germinal cells. So, whether it is mitosis or meiosis, the cell prepares for the cell division. And the preparatory phase is called interphase and you know that uh, this interphase is having three subphases G1 phase or pre-synthetic phase, S phase or synthetic phase and G2 phase that is uh, post-synthetic phase and during that S phase DNA replication occurs. So now uh, let us get into the topic. So what are those uh, enzymes? A set of enzymes participate during this replication. So you just memorize uh, the set of uh, enzymes which are uh, involved in uh, DNA replication. One is DNA dependent DNA polymerase enzyme. DNA dependent DNA polymerase enzyme and uh, the name itself suggests that uh, it catalyzes what reaction polymerization reaction polymerization means what formation of chain okay so that's why DNA polymerase but why the prefix DNA dependent 
means what it is not it cannot catalyze this reaction independently it depends on uh, the existing dna by looking at uh, the sequence of nitrogen bases on one strand it will uh, arrange the new nucleotides according to their complementarity okay and one more thing that it is uh, most efficient enzyme and it can add uh, almost 2000 uh, nucleotides 2000 nucleotides per second 2000 nucleotides per second more efficient and the second one is uh, primase enzyme and was those uh, though this dna dependent dna polymerase enzyme is very efficient but it can't start that uh, uh, polymerization so there is uh, initiation problem is there and to initiate uh, this polymerization it takes the help of a small strand of rna which is called rna primer and that rna primer is synthesized uh, okay with the help of this primase enzyme so primase is required for the production of rna primer okay and now we well, let's say the third one that is the phosphorylase enzyme was remember that uh, uh, for this replication nucleotides are required what nucleotides are required deoxyribonucleotides are required and know that this polymerization requires so much of energy and uh, who will provide this energy so these nucleotides themselves will provide the energy but these nucleotides are having a single phosphate so that's why we call them as what deoxyribo monophosphates so that's why they react with uh, two phosphates and they become deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates deoxyribo nucleoside triphosphates and uh, they provide that energy for polymerization and after uh, adding that nucleotide the two phosphates will come out and this addition of two phosphates to these deoxyribo monophosphates requires one enzyme and the enzyme is uh, phosphorylase and the fourth enzyme is helicase and this helicase okay the dna is double stranded one and the two strands are uh, uh, binded by hydrogen bonds so unwinding of uh, this uh, double stranded dna is required and this unwinding of uh, uh, this helix occurs uh, with the help of the enzyme helicase so helicase is helping in unwinding and now uh, the two strands which are uh, got separated so they will uh, form what a super helix at the place of uh, uh, replication fork and a tension will be there and the tension uh, will be removed by this enzyme topo isomerase topo isomerase of course uh, uh, topo isomerase you will find in the eukaryotes ek eukaryotes whereas uh, similar enzyme which behaves like topo isomerase you will find in prokaryotes that is called gyrase gyrase 
Okay, and uh, uh, I'm going for the last one. The single strand binding proteins are also there. And these two separated strands, uh, they have to be stabilized like that. And who will stabilize or who will keep them like that uh, are these proteins which are called single strand uh, stabilizing or binding proteins. Single strand binding proteins which can be abbreviated as SSBP. And also when we discuss uh, the mechanism, we come across with uh, uh, two kinds of daughter strands. One is called leading strand and the other one is called a lagging strand. And uh, the leading strand is a continuous strand, whereas lagging strand is discontinuous strand. And uh, uh, in the discontinuous strand, you will find the formation of uh, uh, the, these the strand is not formed continuously so discontinuously in the form of fragments and the fragments uh, later will be jointed with the help of the enzyme DNA ligase so that is the sixth enzyme so these are what a set of enzymes that are involved in the replication of the okay and now uh, we will uh, go for uh, the mechanism. And just remember this. Uh, um, there are uh, five steps during uh, the replication. The first step is origin of uh, replication. Okay, this origin of replication means what uh, uh, the DNA is very long, long strand. Means what long uh, molecule, and uh, where this uh, replication will start, the place where replication starts. Is called what origin of replication, and uh, uh, remember in prokaryotes, one DNA will be there, which is a circular DNA, and it will have one origin of replication. Means what one site for uh, replication origin, but whereas in eukaryotes, the DNA varies lengthy and is distributed among different uh, chromosomes. That's why it will have uh, thousands of uh, origin of replications. So just remember uh, the point, the number of uh, origin of replications in prokaryotes is one or single origin of replication, whereas in eukaryotes, thousands of origin of replications you will find. So that is uh, the first one, origin of replication. And uh, the second one is activation of uh, deoxyribonucleotides. Okay, first of all, uh, the deoxyribonucleotides should be activated uh, so that uh, they will uh, uh, come and join to make a new stand. And I am writing how uh, this will happen. You know that uh, the DNA has uh, three types of uh, nucleotides, DAMP, DGMP, DTMP and D C M P. Okay. Deoxy adenine monophosphate. Sorry. Deoxy adenosine monophosphate. Deoxy guanosine monophosphate. Deoxy thymidine monophosphate. Deoxy cytidine monophosphate. Now uh, to this two phosphates are added. And uh, the enzyme is phosphorylase. Phosphorylase. Here also, phosphorylase. And what is formed here? D ATP, D 
GTP, D, TTP, and D, CTP. But the deoxy adenosine triphosphate, deoxy guanosine triphosphate, deoxy thymidine triphosphate, and deoxy cytidine triphosphate. But of course, these are uh, we can say these are deoxy nucleoside deoxy nucleoside triphosphates. These are deoxy nucleotide phosphates. So don't forget uh, uh, the point. In nucleotide, you will find only one phosphate. If it, but uh, these are uh, triphosphoric nucleosides. Triphosphoric nucleosides. And these triphosphoric nucleosides uh, will perform dual function. This is what they are performing two functions. What is it? They behave as substrates as well as they provide energy for polymerization. They behave as substrates as well as they provide energy for polymerization. That is what uh, the dual role played by these uh, triphosphoric nucleosides. Okay, that is uh, the second one. So, they are activated. Now, uh, uh, let us see the third step. Unwinding of helix. So, the two stands will separate by the breakage of the hydrogen bonds and this is catalyzed by the enzyme helicase. Okay. And you can see that uh, this is uh, one strand. This is uh, a Watson Crick uh, model of DNA replication. And you can see that uh, this strand and this strand are the parent strands. Okay. And uh, I am showing 3 prime end here and here 5 prime end. And this one is having 5 prime here and 3 prime here. Because uh, do not forget that uh, the two stands uh, in DNA are not parallel, they are uh, anti parallel. Okay, now uh, uh, do not forget one point here that uh, this polymerization activity always uh, occurs from which end to which end? 5 prime end to okay, 3 prime end. So that is why the new strand is formed in this direction. 5 prime end to 3 prime end direction. And you can see the diagrammatic representation here. So in the diagrammatic representation, the, we can understand very easily. So this is 3 prime end of uh, this parent strand. And this is 5 prime end of this parent strand. And you can see the new strand is formed in this direction. That is what the direction 5 prime to 3 prime direction. 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Okay. And uh, uh, but what is the fourth step? Formation of primer strand. That is RNA primer. A short uh, RNA strand is formed and which will initiate this uh, polymerization. So, uh, that has initiated already. So, that uh, polymerase enzyme now uh, will uh, come and uh, add the nucleotides according to the complementarity. That means, for example, if A is here, the enzyme will bring T. If T is here, it will bring A. And if G is here, C, like that, according to complementarity. And they are all uh, corrected by phosphodiester bonds. So, a new strand is formed. Okay. And, uh, uh, but the initiation is done by that RNA primer, which is later, uh, okay, removed enzymatically. So, it will not stay there. It is removed uh, enzymatically later. And now uh, let us see elongation of new strand. So, as uh, this one more point you remember whenever uh, uh, this DNA helix opens, it opens uh, uh, not completely because that requires so much of energy. That is why it uh, opens 
ഓക്കെ ഇൻ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് വൈസ് വേറെ ഓക്കെ എ ബിറ്റ് ഓപ്പൻസ് ഫസ്റ്റ് ആൻഡ് ലേറ്റർ ആഫ്റ്റർ കംപ്ലീഷൻ ആൻഡ് വൺ മോർ ബിറ്റ് വിൽ ഓപ്പൺ ഓക്കെ സോ ഇൻ എ സ്റ്റെപ്പ് വൈസ് മാനർ ടു കൺസേർവ് ദ എനർജി that's why whenever it opens a inverted y shaped structure is formed and this is called what replication fork replication fork and now let us see here uh, uh, under the influence of this enzyme uh, dna polymerase enzyme this strand is formed continuously but whereas uh, actually speaking up to here it opened okay and uh, the polymerase enzyme started here this because this is 5 prime end for this uh, enzyme so uh, it is going like this oh. so don't forget the polymerization always occurs in what direction 5 prime to 5 prime to 3 prime direction that is polymerization direction that's why here uh, if this is okay and here also it it follows the same thing but the thing is that uh, suppose let us say first time it uh, started here and it came here and by the time uh, uh, again it is opened further and then uh, that polymerase enzyme will come here but every time uh, remember one thing that the primer is required so uh, i hope uh, you are understanding here so here uh, only one primer is enough for uh, this strand one primer is enough but here uh, many primers are required so because uh, one primer came here and uh, okay initiated uh, the polymerization and it is over here and now uh, it is opened uh, up to here so one more primer comes here and uh, continues this polymerization up to here and again uh, it opened so it comes here that's why you can see that here i am showing one arrow mark continuously and here i am showing three arrows so this strand is formed not continuously this strand is formed in bits and these bits are called wakazaki fragments wakazaki fragments and this continuous uh, uh, daughter strand is called what uh, leading strand leading strand and whereas this discontinuous strand is called lagging strand lagging strand and don't forget that these uh, uh, fragments or wakazaki fragments or uh, these uh, fragments of uh, daughter strand are later connected by the enzyme dna ligase dna ligase like that uh, uh, finally what will happen uh, the two daughter uh, dna helices are formed and these two daughter dna helices are identical to the parent in every aspect so this uh, dna polymerase enzyme will not only okay adds these nucleotides okay at faster rate but also adds the nucleotides very accurately so accuracy is required and if any okay uh mistake occurs if any mistake occurs that leads to what mutations that leads to mutations and one more point you have to remember that uh, uh, immediately after this replication of dna the cell the cells should divide suppose if uh, after replication if uh, the cell do not uh, divide so then that leads to polyploidy i hope you know that uh, a diploid cell will have two sets of uh, chromosomes and uh, uh, suppose after replication if the cell doesn't divide 
then that, that leads to polyploidization means what many sets of chromosomes will be formed. That will lead uh, to complications or abnormal conditions of the organism. So, this is what uh, uh, the mechanism of uh, DNA replication. Okay. So, I hope uh, uh, you are understanding this one. So, just remember these steps and already uh, we discussed, I gave you a list of uh, the enzymes, okay, uh, that also you just memorize.